The Simpsons had been on the air for about six weeks when creator Matt Groening appeared on the Larry King show, the radio show, not the TV show, talking about his career, his great series, Life is Hell. This is the Childhood is Hell book. And, of course, his strip appeared in alternative weeklies around the country, like Free Times in Cleveland. But on January 17th, 1990, Graining appeared on the Larry King Show, and my friend Andrew Jaffe threw in a cassette and started recording it and sent it to me. So this is nearly the complete radio interview with Matt on Larry King's show from January 17th, 1990. Thank you, Andrew, for everything. Love you. Quite a lot. And uh, kept on doing it anyway. And uh, eventually... With the hope of having a strip? Yeah, oh, eventually yeah. I wanted a, my own comic strip. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see anybody else out there who draw as crummy as I did. So uh, I didn't expect to do that for a living, but I liked doing it, so I was going to do it anyway for the rest of my life. I did, uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 1977 uh, from Portland, Oregon. It's very beautiful up there. Uh, green mm -hmm. trees, and blue sky. It's down here, it's you know, brown ground, brown air, brown water. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started drawing a comic strip called Life in Hell, which I just Xeroxed and sent to my friends back up in the Pacific Northwest. And they liked it so much that I kept on doing it. And eventually I showed it to a newspaper editor here uh, uh, at the Los Angeles Reader, a little weekly free newspaper. And he started printing it as a cartoon strip. What were you doing for a living? Well, <laughs> let's see. Uh, my very first job in Los Angeles, I wanted to be a writer. So I, uh, I didn't know how you go about doing that. And uh, I looked in the L.A. Times under when the help wanted and well, help wanted writer slash chauffeur. <laughs> was, the, was the ad that I answered. <laughs> got that job? I got that job. That was my very first job in L.A. Yeah, I, I, uh, my job was to, to uh, drive around an 88-year-old uh, retired movie director. He never directed anything you've ever heard of. Um, and uh, that was during the day, and I'd listen to his anecdotes, and then in the evening I would ghostwrite his autobiography. I was only the latest in a long line of writer-chauffeurs for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the manuscript was a foot high. It was very bad. At this point, one would say that the career of Matt Groening wasn't going too far. No. He's drawing a little cartoon for a weekly newspaper in Los Angeles that's a giveaway, yep. and he's writing and driving around an 88-year-old... Retired movie director. Retired movie director who never made a movie. Right. Career. So then what happened? <laughs> well, uh, uh, this guy, this movie director, his... Uh, he didn't do anything really, really great after 1933, and uh, <laughs> his uh, his uh, his autobiography was all very, uh, very much about his mother, about his life with his mother. He'd say, "I met Cecil B. DeMille today. Uh, I ran home immediately to tell mother." That was that kind of thing, and uh, I didn't last too long in that job. So that's it, it was, but it was fuel for my comic strip, Life in Hell, because mm -hmm. that's what I felt life was at the time. I was in Good. a very bad mood. At this point, no thought of being an animator. No. So how did that happen? Well, I got a call uh, several years later, uh, a woman named Polly Platt, who did the art direction on Terms of Endearment. She liked my comic strip, and she gave some original art of mine to James L. Brooks, the man who directed Terms of Endearment. Oh, well. And a few years later, after he'd been staring it on his office wall, I guess, for a few years, he gave me a call. Uh, you know, he and... Uh, and his cohorts were putting together the Tracy Ullman show for the Fox Network, and he asked me if I wanted my, to try my hand at animation. And that was my, that was my uh, introduction. For Tracy Ullman? Animation. For the Tracy Ullman show. Those, and so I created The Simpsons, a little family, uh, for, uh, for that show. And I was uh, put together with a, a small independent animation company here in Los Angeles called Klasky Chupo, run by a crazy, un crazy Hungarian man named Gabor Chupo. And uh, they allowed me to go to town. So uh, Simpsons is a spin-off, in a sense. Yes, it's a spin-off. Our guest is uh, Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, which started on the, the wacky Tracy Ullman show, and now has its own show on Fox. And Matt Groening now has a major career. And we'll be back after these messages. On in Los Angeles. And now, Larry King. Our guest is Matt Groening. He is creator of The Simpsons. It airs 8.30 Sunday nights on Fox. Is uh, the thought then of cartooning, is that now the past? Are you now a major hit animator and you don't want to be Charlie Schultz anymore? 
Uh, no, I well, Charlie Schultz does does animation, sort of, you know? I mean, he does, uh, but he's known as the cartoonist who does animation. Right, sorts, right, right. No, Charles Schultz has always been a hero of mine. In fact, uh, in my, in my uh, weekly cartoon strip, I have two characters named Akbar and Jeff who are the result of, of uh, failed attempts to draw Charlie Brown when I was in the fifth grade. Uh, we, my friends and I used to love Peanuts. We used to try to draw Charlie Brown. It's a very hard character to draw. Really? Um, yeah. It looks so simple to draw. Well, I mean, I'm not an artist at all, but he looks simple. Well, it, 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 <laughs> uh, it, if you draw Charlie Brown wrong, he looks very scary. And we did, repeatedly. <laughs> and so, the only other character that's harder, I think, is Popeye, which I, uh, I, it doesn't even look like a human head when I draw it. You're still doing your weekly cartoon? Yeah, I'm still doing for it. For the reader? And, yeah. Well, for, no, actually, locally in Los Angeles, I'm in the, uh, the LA Weekly, and I'm in a couple of hundred other papers around the country. Um... With that title? Yeah, believe it or not, except for one paper asked me to change it to Life in Heck. They, they, <laughs> they said, and I agreed readily to do it because I thought it would be a funny thing to say to, in interviews, and, and they got embarrassed. And, and the woman called me up after hearing an interview and, and said, uh, I was only kidding, I was only kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> Give us the concept of The Simpsons. Who are they? What do they do that makes them primetime TV? Um, the Simpsons are, are uh, an all-American family who, uh, through the miracle of animation, uh, are able to love each other and strangle each other at the same time, and it, and it still is funny. At least we think so. It's a, it's a, it's a fully functioning, dysfunctional family. They, they beat up on each other? A little bit. I mean, it's stuff that probably would be pretty appalling in live action, and we can get away with in animation. That's Example. one of the fun things. Uh, the father uh, takes a family photo and the kid makes faces and he, when the photo finally flashes with the automatic flash, you know, automatic thing, um, he, he's strangling his kid. And if you, you gotta see, you gotta see it. You gotta see it. It's, it's outrageous. It's, uh, Pretty, <laughs> isn't animation expensive? Yeah, it's very expensive. Um, however, uh, <laughs> uh, the nature of this project is uh, it's, it's low budget. This is not The Little Mermaid. This is, this is not Fantasia. This is low-budget animation. Yeah, Fox goes with it Sunday night at 8.30 following America's Most Wanted, right before Married with Children. Right. You get incredible numbers. Yeah. Can't be just simple low-budget. Well, when I say low-budget, I'm just saying what this is what the animators are always whining about is how little they're paid. Uh, but they give us more than their money's worth. I think the show looks really, really good. But my favorite cartoon show uh, on TV uh, has had some of the the, uh, the most primitive animation. That's Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle and uh, George of the Jungle, other Jay Ward shows, those were my favorites. And uh, it just, uh, I always thought the secret of, uh, of entertaining animation on television was uh, not necessarily in the animation, but in the writing. And in, in Rocky and Bullwinkle's case, it was the writing, the voices, and the music. And necessarily be true that a good animator is a good cartoonist and vice versa? Uh... No, I don't think, I think they're completely different. Apples and oranges. Yep. You could be a great animator and not a good cartoonist. You could be a great cartoonist and not a good animator. Yep. Yep. Right. Are you a better animator? Uh, I'm not much of an animator myself at all. I, I, uh, I, have, I think I have an intuitive, <laughs> an intuitive feel for what, what works in animation and what doesn't, but uh, no, I work with a lot of very talented people. I mean, that's the other thing. This, you know, I, I created the show, but it really is a collaborative effort. There's so many people involved. Any kind, you, anytime you're talking about animation, you're talking about a large number of people. Are you the principal writer? No. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's a group of people. I, I work very closely with the other two executive producers, uh, Sam Simon and James L. Brooks. Uh, I think uh, the, their participation in the project is what got it on the air. What brought uh, James Brooks to to a cartoon strip? What uh, made him... I mean, I know him pretty well, and uh, the, the last time I saw him... Well, he was on his program, but the last time I saw him was when they were doing broadcast news in Washington. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, never <laughs> mentioned that. I have no idea why he's... <laughs> reduced himself to this uh, <laughs> re relatively uh, lowbrow form of entertainment. I think that I think he he likes my stuff. He he liked it. He gave me a shot, and uh, and it, and it look audience great liked compliment it too. to you because this is after all the creator of Taxi. Yes. Arguably the best sitcom ever. I, Mary Tyler Moore. Mm -hmm. It's a great compliment to you. Right. No, no. It's, it's a thrill to be working with uh, one of the geniuses of uh, movies and television. How many weeks ahead are The Simpsons? Uh, <laughs> a couple. That's a all? couple. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, it takes six months to do a single episode. We're working on, on many episodes at once, um, and we're, you know, we're scrambling to get this show done. I thought the computers make it easier now. No computers. 
We don't use computers. No computers. I, I read somewhere where computers make it much easier to do cartooning now. Mm, they do, but not for not for our purposes. Uh, it, computers are very... Uh, computer animation, I'm sure it'll get better, in it, but right now for acting, you really need the talents of people thinking very, very carefully. And uh, computers just can't do it. Do you have live people do it first? Like Disney used to do? No, the rotoscoping? No, we don't. Well, he'd have a whole adult, regular humans do it and then draw from that. You know, Disney did that with his feature right. films. Right. No, we, uh, <coughs> uh, we record the shows first from our scripts, like radio shows, uh, with, the, with the actors uh, standing around in a semicircle in front of a bunch of microphones. And um, sometimes the animator's there because it, it's, it's good help to see the facial expressions of the actors. The Simpsons are pretty grotesque, but I must say that occasionally the actors end up looking a little bit like their characters. <laughs> uh, the actors are professional actors. Are you looking for over voiceover kinds? Or? We, uh, we use uh, a couple of uh, cast members from the Tracy Ullman show. Julie Kavner um, uh, plays the voice of Marge, the mother in the show. Dan Castellaneta plays the voice of Homer. Uh, and, and almost every actor involved with the show does multiple voices. If you want to talk to Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, our numbers are 703 685 Here are phone calls at the bottom of the hour for Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons. It airs 8.30 Eastern Sunday nights, 8.30, and, uh, 830 Pacific and Eastern, 7.30 Central. It ratings in its premiere was number two overall, number one in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Sacramento, and nationwide number one in adults, 18 to 34. The Simpsons. Now, if you've seen The Simpsons, the, the, they're, they are weird-looking people. Father has no hair. He has two strands. The mother has, how would you describe her hair? Uh, three feet high. Three feet high. And the kids, one of the kids, the boy kid, has a head sort of shaped as a crown, right? He's got... Yeah, spike head hair. I had that haircut when I was five. Spike head hair and kind of be They all have the same eyes. And then the door, the girls have sort of starfish kind of heads, right? <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. describe this. Yeah, and tragic overbites. <clears throat> Bulgy tragic. eyes and tragic overbites. These children are how old? Uh, the uh, boy, Bart, is uh, 10 years old. His sister, Lisa, is 8. And the youngest baby, Maggie, I don't know, somewhere 1 and 2. I don't know about her. <laughs> is violence preeminent on this show? Yeah, in a way... Uh, Animation lends it for itself to really exaggerated stuff, you know. So yeah, there is a there's there's a lot more extreme stuff than you'd see in live action, but it's not anvils dropping on people's heads. Um, it's not uh, characters' eyeballs falling out of their brains and you know and that kind of thing. It, it's uh, it's it's subtle and restrained. When was the last time we had prime time animation? Flintstones. Flintstones, Jetsons, Johnny Quest, all that mid '60s stuff by Hanna Barbera. There have been a few since then, but uh, nobody remembers. But those are the ones that people remember. In fact, one of the reasons I think The Simpsons got on the air is because the kids who grew up with the Flintstones and the Jetsons are now in a position of power at the Fox Network. And <laughs> they're able to make that decision. <laughs> I remember those shows. The Flintstones were direct honeymooners, right? I mean, uh, they were almost a direct steal of the honeymooners. Yeah, I would say there was a pretty close... Uh, I mean, there very little uh, to hide <laughs> about that. Did you have any bases in reality for The Simpsons? Uh, there's a little bit of my family, a little bit of growing up, uh, some of my neighbors... Uh, uh, I, uh, I made a real big mistake way at the beginning. I thought it would be a funny inside joke when these cartoons were just very short uh, bumpers on the Trace Yeoman show to name members uh, of my family uh, the same as the cartoon characters. So I have a father named Homer, uh, and the, I have a younger sister uh, named Lisa, another sister named Maggie. Maggie is now a, a, <laughs> a mother herself, no longer sucks a pacifier. But so there are some <laughs> some similarities. <laughs> Although I'd like to say, for the record, my family is not as ugly as this, as the Simpsons. Were you surprised by the ratings? Um, yeah, I was. I was surprised. I always felt that the show would appeal to kids right off. I think kids are on the lookout for for good animation uh, or any animation, actually, as it turns out. And I just hope that adults would give it a chance because this is not uh, the Flintstones is was good, but I, this is a really adult entertainment. The writing is not uh, written down for kids. It really is uh, clever stuff. Why do we like animation? Well, I know why I like it. As a cartoonist who's been drawing for about 10 years professionally, uh, these two-dimensional uh, lines on paper, to see these creatures come to life and to talk and to move is like a hallucination. It's just incredible. Um, Film is, a, film is a recording of reality, but there's no corresponding reality in 
in cartoons. It doesn't exist. It's an illusion. And I think it, I think it delights people. It delights my nine-and-a-half-month-old baby. That's all. I point him at the TV. Yeah, we like, now, we know it's not real. Right. But we, we somehow, like, I don't know, like Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. I knew Bugs. Right. right? He Bugs exists. Was, he exists. exists. Bugs was part of my life. Yeah. He lives. Yes. Yeah. Now, and that's really the willing suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. Right? To right. accept, if I accept Bugs. Right. If I accept the Simpsons mm-hmm. as real people, I have mm-hmm. gone beyond Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor into acceptance of what I know is drawn. Well, one of the things that we, when we were talking about the conception of the series, uh, um, uh, Jim Brooks said, uh, we've got to try to make people forget they're watching a cartoon. Not every step of the way, but at certain points in the story. So we don't go crazy with this cartoon. We really are trying to do sh- mm-hmm. stories which have emotional moments. We're going to pause for news headlines, a word from your local stations, then take your phone calls. From Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, and he also draws the comic strip of uh, The Weekly Life is Hell, right? Life in Hell. Life in Hell. Uh, life is Hell, too. Oh, life is heck. Uh, Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, an enormous start uh, for that show, 8.30 Sundays on Fox. This is a, well, I shouldn't say surprise, every kind of time we come to L.A., he joins us, but at the top of the hour, Robert Orr will join us. You loved him in Good Morning Vietnam, screamed his name in Batman, and now cheer his praises in Blaze. Robert Wool, always great to see him. Bull Durham, how about that? My man. Our guest is Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, which was a runaway hit its first week in the ratings. It was a Christmas special first, and is a spinoff from Tracy Ullman. Airs 8.30 Sunday nights on Fox. Ready to go to your calls for Matt Groening, Denton, Texas. Hello. Hi, Mr. Groening. Um, Hi. I um, have been a fan of yours ever since I got uh, Love is Hell in, I was like in sixth grade, and I got it from a friend of mine as a gift, and I was wondering, um, what inspired you to make uh, Childhood is Hell uh, more serious, uh, more or less, than the other books? And one more question, what does um, fa mean? My sister and I have been wondering that ever since Love is Hell. What is fa? <laughs> fa. <laughs> fa. Fa is a is a, uh, a, a you know a term of uh, of uh, disgruntlement. I guess is the best way to say it. <laughs> you read Love Is Hell in the sixth grade. Did it make any sense? Yes, I was in hysterics, and people actually started calling me Binky because I went everywhere with that book. It got taken up in school so many times. I almost was like sent to the principal. Well, uh, that was my first cartoon book. Uh, I did that uh, when I was uh, uh, just sort of in the midst of some heartbreak myself. In fact. Many of my cartoon books are the reason. They're sort of self-help books for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did the series of cartoons, Love Is Hell, and uh, and uh, I got a new girlfriend <laughs> as a result of those cartoons. In fact, she published my book. Her name is Deborah Kaplan, and uh, to pay her back, I married her. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and as far as childhood as hell, the, the, yeah, the, you're right. The books did get uh, progressively serious, more serious. Uh, Work as hell was a book that uh, I wrote um, in order to convince myself to quit my lousy job. I used to be a newspaper editor, in, in addition to being a cartoonist, and uh, and so I wanted to do cartooning full time. So at the end of that series of cartoons, I did quit my job and become a cartoonist full time. With childhood as hell, I started thinking about it, and the deal with humor about children is that for the most part it's um it's fairly light stuff it's about the the uh, inconsequentialities of of uh childhood and how we as sophisticated grown-ups understand that their troubles and traumas are uh not really that important and i thought it'd be more interesting to take the point of view of a kid and talk about uh the kinds of things that actually really trouble kids my child was was kind of troubled and i had it relatively uh, easy i think and so i just wrote about that Thank you very much. Matt Groening is our guest, creator of The Simpsons on Fox TV. We go to Saratoga, New York. Hello. Yes, good evening. Mr. Groening, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, Thanks. Big fan of all your work. I'd like to ask you why you think there has been uh, such a lack of animation in prime time and also uh, aimed for adults, and also with a current trend of uh, animation artwork available if you'll be uh, offering any sales of The Simpsons soon. Uh, I've always been mystified that there haven't been other uh, primetime animated TV series since the the days of uh, the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Um, And and I was surprised that I ended up having to do it myself. 
uh, I, I would have tuned in if there had been one. I think there's an audience out there. I think maybe the people that make uh, decisions uh, at networks uh, tend to be a little timid, I guess. And, and also animation is an extremely cumbersome process. I think it's a lot easier to do a live action series. Uh, as I said before, it takes about six months for us to do a single episode of The Simpsons from beginning of script to the uh, final show. And uh, every step of the way requires constant attention. It's not, uh, your, your mind can't wander at any point. And that may be part of it too. And uh, what was your other question? What was the second question? The original cells. Uh, in the case of The Simpsons, uh, we have 50 animators here in Hollywood doing the storyboards and uh, the animatics uh, the, uh, and the pencil tests and the character design and all that stuff. And then the whole shebang is shipped over to Korea where, it is, where the ink and paint is done. And uh, the climate in Korea is such that the cells fall apart very quickly. Uh, the cheap paint and ink that they use there makes the cells no, not last that long. And there's another problem of getting the cells through customs because we have to declare a value on them. What, are, what is an animation cell worth? I don't know. So we're trying to figure out how to get them over here. By so, cell, you mean what? Uh, an animation cell, a, a piece of acetate with drawings on it, you know, with the cartoon characters on it. Something that's actually used. Right now, by the way, there's a whole market in... Uh, in animation cells of various characters, uh, Disney cells are obviously the the most valuable. And uh, there's a submarket of uh, animation cells that aren't real, that are just sort of done for the for the uh, mm. for the market. And I personally find that uh, I mystified why people buy that stuff. Are there going to be Simpson dolls? Oh yes, <laughs> there's a Bart Simpson talking doll in the works. Uh, the toy company would not allow me to have him say his, my, his favorite catchphrase, which is, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? They felt that that was inappropriate coming out of a doll, and they wouldn't let him belch. And that's something that Bart does, too, a lot on the show. Well, toy manufacturers, were they? <laughs> yeah. Our guest we're working on that. is Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons. We go to Baltimore. Hello. I'm, I, I feel rude, but I didn't call to talk to a guest. I didn't think there was a guest tonight. What do you want now? What do we do now? We're, we're at the stalemate well, I just here. I wanted to say something nice about Larry. In fact, I had a lot of nice things. What well, that's nice. So call back later because we do have a guest. Okay. Thanks. Matt Greening is our guest. We go to Kansas City, Missouri. Hello. I'm depressed. Hi, Larry. Hi. Thank you for entertaining and educating me for several years. You're welcome. Matt, are, are the books that you've written available in most any bookstore? I haven't seen them yet. Should be. They're published by Pantheon Books, which is a division of Random House, which has fairly good distribution around the country. You should be able to find them anywhere. Okay, and one other thing. I've only seen the strip in a local paper that we have around here every once in a while, and I really liked it. How would I be able to encourage a um, pretty major newspaper around here to carry that strip? Well, unfortunately, the nature of, of uh, comic strips these days in newspapers is uh, they're, very, they're squeezed very tight. And uh, my comic strip is about the size of three regular daily comic strips. It's uh, about six inches by six inches high, and I don't allow it to be printed any smaller than that. Um, uh, I, I, there's another obstacle. It's my strip is called Life in Hell. And that that cuts off. <laughs> that annoys a lot of newspaper editors who generally think cartoons are getting away with murder anyway. So it's a struggle. I'm in a few daily papers, but not many. <laughs> uh, I I would hope that uh, they realize that the the daily papers that I'm in, uh, you know, they don't fall apart because of the presence of my strip. And uh, I hope they, uh, you know, I hope more papers take me. Thank you. What about the potential of The Simpsons for a strip? Uh, that's possible. Uh, I certainly don't have time to draw it myself. Aren't I would like the Flintstones a strip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's possible. It's possible. I'm open to discussion about that. And when you think the show gets popular, that uh, King Features or some of these syndicates would say, "Hey, why not?" Just well, they've approached me. Uh, various various syndicates have approached me in the past about doing my uh, syndicating my strip. But the deal they always offer is is uh, I don't like. In fact, my strip is self syndicated. Uh, the name of my the name of my syndicate is uh, Acme Features Syndicate, which is me and and uh, and the people I work with. I'm the only one that I'm the only thing that the that the. Uh, syndicate syndicates and i found that it's really good for being paid by these newspapers if you call yourself a syndicate <laughs> rather than just Acme say features syndicate inc <laughs> yes all rights reserved <laughs> right our guest is matt graining creator of the simpsons back after these messages 
Matt Groening, who draws the strip Live, Life is Hell, who is the creator of The Simpsons, seen Sunday nights on Fox. We go to New Era, Michigan. Hello. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to ask him a question. Is it true that you're from Phoenix, Arizona? No. No, I'm from Portland, Oregon. No? Oh. Yeah. Sometimes the newspapers that I'm in in these various towns pretend that I'm from their their hometown. I'm in the New Times in Phoenix, a really good yeah. newspaper. That's where I discovered your comic strip. I just like to say it's a great comic strip, and good luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you. To Syracuse, New York, with Matt Groening. Hello. Larry, hi. Great show, and you continue to make me a happy insomniac. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Matt, you're fantastic. Uh, breath of fresh air on the alternative, uh, on the comics page and alternative papers. I just wanted to tell you that my favorite book is Childhood in Hell, and I'm a child psychologist, and um, I think your conceptualizations of Binky's concerns, issues, and relationships are right on. I think they're great. Well, thanks a lot. You know, it's always amazed me that more cartoonists don't do stuff that's that's serious. I mean, that they that the that the, the you know the drawing style. My drawing style is very simple and silly, but I like to tackle uh, you know the darker issues, the things that trouble people the most. In fact, one of my one of my guidelines for my comic strip is try to try to keep it on subjects that keep people lying awake at three o'clock in the morning. You know, after after your show. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I just have one question. Yeah. What exactly is Akbar and Jeff's relationship? Uh, they're either lovers or brothers or both. Okay, thanks a lot. It's up to you. It's up to you to decide. Continue best of luck. Thank you. We go to Germantown, Ohio. Hello. Hi, Larry. Hi, Matt. Uh, Hi. I've got some real Simpsons fans here. My husband is a uh, does a strip for a special interest magazine every month, and he identifies with Bart very strongly, and uh, we just love the show. Now, our concerns are, like you said, with the Bart doll, that... Um, that eventually this adult-oriented theme, which is just fantastic, and it's like real families, is going to be knocked down, and I'm just hoping that Fox is going to allow you the leeway more so than the regular network, uh, you know, to continue. They, they, they've been slightly troubled by some of the, right, by some of the scripts, but uh, uh, we, we've, uh, we've uh, talked with them, and they've understood, and there hasn't been a compromise yet ever that's the most amazing thing about this i'm from this alternative press world which uh generally all my friends are hip and jaded and cynical and snotty and they hate everything and uh they told me i was gonna uh, you know i was selling out and i was gonna uh, lose my soul by going to television and i know the horror stories about the way tv operates too it has not been true in this case uh i don't feel like this thing has been watered down and i don't think that it will be watered down and if you liked what you've seen so far in the first two shows wait you just went. This show well, gets very, wait. very strange. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's some good people at Fox, and they're young. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jamie Kellner, those guys are mm -hmm. really a young group. Yep. To Denton, Texas. Hello. Yes. Um, I think probably the. I had a uh, comment and a question both. Um, as far as my observations, the key to the the success of the cartoon is how painfully correct these things are that you do about the families. I mean, it's a like a microscopic close up of family life. And in a lot of ways, they're painful to watch because you, you go back and think about your own childhood experiences and how close they are. Um, I love the Christmas special that you had, and I had a question about the dog. Is he on the show now? Yes. Oh, that's um, that's one of the things about the in a lot of cartoons generally, you know, you, or even in a regular sitcom, you throw in, uh, you know, uh, Uncle Hubert, and he comes in one show and then leaves. In our show, there we try to we try to live up to the consequences of the actions of the Simpsons. So that dog that they that they got at the racetrack on Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he's with them. Santa's little helper is with them in, in for the rest of the series. That's Unless great. he gets run over, which may be a plot for an upcoming show. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. My other question was. Um, would you be open to a full-length movie sometime? That would be a fan... I'm not making the offer, but I think that'd be a great thing for you to do. Well, if you're not making the offer... Yeah, of course. Of course it'd be open to a full-length movie. Or all this movie. has got to be a no, you know, pinch yourself what's well, happened to you. Yeah, it, it, the, I, I, would, I would love to do a full-length movie. Uh, I think the nature of theatrical f features and animation means uh, very uh, sophisticated uh, epic style animation and The Simpsons is relatively low key so I don't know how we would expand it exactly but I would love to do it. That's great. I wish you continued success. Thank you. Our guest is Matt Groening. His fandom grows to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hello. Hi. Um, my favorite characters are Akbar and Jeff. I think they're just tremendous and I'd like to know what inspires you to have them tackle some pretty difficult issues like Supreme Court decisions and HIV testing? Well, uh, 
Akbar and Jeff, I didn't quite finish my story earlier. I was saying how I was a big fan of Charles Schultz when I was a kid, and we attempted to draw Charlie Brown. Well, eventually our mutated versions of Charlie Brown uh, turned into Akbar and Jeff, who have very big noses and, and both eyes on the same side of their nose. Uh, we thought at the time in the fifth grade, this was the cleverest thing you could do. It just made us roll on the floor that these eyeballs were both were on the same side of the nose. I then gave these characters fezes. I cloned them, and they still have Charlie Brown's uh, T-shirt on. Uh, and uh, and I just stuck them in the back of the strip uh, and had them comment on various things. And eventually, I decided they were brothers or lovers or both, as I've said before. And uh, and it annoyed people to no end uh, in in some places. And other people were delight. Other people were delighted. And I tried to do. Uh, uh, some cartoons, like I said before, about some of the difficult subjects. So I did some about AIDS. You ever want to do political cartooning? I've tried to, but my political cartoons are generally fairly heavy-handed. And basically, I pretty much draw ra rabbits. That's also <laughs> apples and oranges, isn't yeah. it? Political cartooning and then Charles Schultz. That's I think, two worlds. I think there's a, there, there, there is a politics... Now, there are politics in my cartoons. In fact, one of my goals is to make people laugh and annoy Republicans at the same time. So, <laughs> Our guest is Matt Groening. He's the creator of The Simpsons. He also draws Life is Hell. Uh, we'll come back with our remaining moments and some more phone calls for Matt. The show airs uh, Sunday nights, 8.30 Eastern on Fox. Now these messages. Groening, creator of The Simpsons. Brandon Tartikoff, Friday night. Robert Wall will be with us at the top of the hour. We go to Austin, Texas. Hello. Hi, Larry. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi, Matt. Uh, congratulations on the baby to you and Deborah, and congratulations Thanks. on the success of The Simpsons. Um, God, yeah, it's 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 great to talk to you. I have three quick questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what are some of your favorite cartoonists? Second one is, uh, what advice do you give cartoonists who are trying to get into self syndication? And uh, and um, why don't they have cartoons on the Tracy Ullman show now? I understood that they were talking to Michael Dugan and uh, Linda Berry about doing some stuff. Uh. <laughs> a lot of questions. Let's see. My favorite cartoonist uh, in the daily strips, I, I, I continue to love Charles Schultz, uh, Gary Trudeau, Burke Breathed, uh, Gary Larson, uh, uh, the guy that draws Drabble, it's Ken Fagan, Ken Fagan, the only guy that draws worse than I do. Um, uh, I like a lot of stuff. Underground comics, uh, R. Crumb was a big hero of mine when I was a kid. Uh, I like okay. in New York, well, you know, I like a lot of them. What was the second self part of it? Self-syndicating. Oh, yeah. self-syndicating. Uh, well, the way I don't know how other people should do it. The way I did it was I got into the the so-called local alternative news weekly, um, and I would say try to get a comic strip in in your local paper. The the main thing is to get it published somewhere. Well, a newsletter, publish it yourself. I started out xeroxing my stuff as a little comic book, and selling it in the record store that I had a job at. So, uh, uh, but you know, get it published somehow, even if you have to publish it yourself. Okay. And the third question was what quickly? Uh. uh why did they drop cartoons from uh, the Tracy Ullman show? I understood they were well, talking to some other cartoons about doing stuff for them. Uh, it's it's just very hard to uh, to uh, realize uh, somebody's vision. I lucked out. I I hit it off with the three animators at Klasky Chupo. Uh, who now number who I'm over 50 uh, right away, and we were re really in tune. But I, they're working on it. They're working on it. Onward to Utica, New York. Hello. How's it going, Larry? Um, Fine. I've got uh, two quick questions for you. I absolutely love The Simpsons. Uh, the first question is, uh, do you know a woman by the name of Jenny Tilly? Jennifer Tilly, yes. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, the wife of uh, Sam Simon, the executive producer of The Simpsons. Right, right. I saw her on uh, the Arsenio Hall show a couple nights ago, and she was so bizarre. I was just wondering if she had any influence on any of your characters. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the wife of one of the executive producers, a guy I have to work with every Go single ahead, day. Go ahead, Matt. Be honest. Do no, she, so? she's a very funny woman. She, uh, In fact, I saw part of that Arsenio Hall show myself, and she was very wild on that show. No, she's extremely funny um, and uh, very smart. Uh, she plays it. She she acts dizzy uh, on TV, but she's a very smart woman. Yeah, I got the impression that she was thinking to act. I didn't think anybody could really be the way she was acting. Uh, my second <laughs> question is... In 1985, I attended an, an animation film festival in Cleveland, Ohio, and I saw a, an animation short that reminded me very much of The Simpsons. It had to do with uh, a family very much like The Simpsons, and in particular a son who had this obsession with sawing things, and he kept wanting to saw the legs off the chairs and things like that. 
Uh, did you have anything to do with that, or was that yours? Did you see that? No, I, I think I know what you're talking about. A cartoon named the the uh, called the Big Snit. I think that was the name of it. I, I I, I, by a guy animator named Richard Condy, mm -hmm. if that's the one I'm thinking of, and I may have the name wrong. But yeah, that's a brilliant cartoon. Uh, well, it's one of my favorites. Uh, just, just a great cartoon. He's a great animator. And we go to Houston, Texas, with Matt Groening. Hello. Hi. Um, Simpsons are great. Uh, Recent, I, I wanted to touch on the fact that uh, prime time animation, how it's basically declined recently, but I think it's on the upswing. Do you think a lot of that is due to Hanna Barbera and their uh, cheapening of the medium with uh, some, like the recent Yogi Bears and such like that? Yogi Bear? Well, Yogi Bears, what is that? That's early 60s. No. Uh, yeah, but they had more recent ones, which were just, they started to cheapen and then with the Jetsons and such. I, I, I'm not familiar with... Uh, my, I, I've got to say, pre pretty much most TV animation leaves me cold as well, to the extent that I don't even, I don't even pay attention to it also, at all. Also, if I could say, I just got a book. Have you um, the Enchanted Drawings? Yep, I got that. You're mentioned in that. Yeah, I know. I, what a thrill. I, the Simpsons are on the cover. Here's this book, this great big $75 coffee table book. They're right in the index. And, uh, yeah, the Simpsons are on the cover, along with Woody Woodpecker and Mighty Mouse and uh, Popeye and all the rest. Really, what's it, a history of cartoons? It's a, hi it's a brilliant history of cartoons, nominated for a National Book Award by Charles Solomon. Uh, oh. Writes about animation for the Los Angeles Times. I'm going to get one more great call. Book. Great book. One more call. Belvedere, South Carolina, for Matt Groening. Hello. Yes, sir, Matt. Uh, I got a hysterical phone call from my sister, both of my sisters, at two different times. They said that uh, I've got to see The Simpsons because I acted just like Bart when I was growing up. Would you describe Bart? Because I don't remember how I grew up, and I've never seen The Simpsons. <laughs> you know, who is Bart? Bart is the Bart is the ten-year-old kid in the family. He pulls a lot of pranks. He gets into a trouble quite a bit. The rest of The Simpsons are in a struggle to be normal. They fail miserably, but they do try to be normal. Bart does not try to be normal. He tries to be abnormal. And I just got to tell you. No one I've ever talked to has said, I'm Bart, but everybody I've talked to who is familiar with the show said, you know, Bart's just like my little brother. <laughs> well, I'm the little brother, and I was always in trouble, so I guess... <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm a, I'm a little brother, too, so... <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Much continued success. Thank really you. really great to see someone with talent hit it right. <laughs> and people well, like James Brooks and others who recognize it. Well, same to you and more of it. <laughs> Matt Groening has been our guest. He draws life as hell. He's the creator of... The Simpsons, that uh, debuted originally on Tracy Ullman, and now it has its own slot. The Simpsons, 8.30 Sunday nights on Fox, 8.30 Eastern and Pacific, 7.30 Central. Its first week on, it had a Christmas special. It was number two overall in the time slot, number one in L.A., San Francisco, and Sacramento. And in that key demographic of adults, 18 to 34, it was number one overall. Our guest earlier, Oliver Stone, if you missed any part of these two hours, they'll be repeated one hour from now. Each morning at 2 a.m. Eastern Time, this program is repeated on most stations in its entirety. We'll pause for news on the hour, and we'll have about a half hour of Open Phone America. We'll spend a half hour with the wonderful actor and very talented Robert Wold. Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. Don't worry, this cop that's approaching is not going to interrupt great uploads. He hopefully supports the channel as much as you folks who hit the subscribe button do. There's Patreon and GoFundMe information that I doubt he's going to do. You can. But subscribe. Keep watching. That's all that counts.